Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. Today's date is July 18th, 2013. It's a Thursday. I'm your host, Rob Dew, and here's a look at some of our top stories. Tonight on the InfoWars Nightly News. Russian war games include simulated attacks against the United States. Then, a domestic drone crash lands in Florida. And a zombie virus is used to scare Boy Scouts about bio attacks. All that and more coming up on the InfoWars Nightly News. The government climbed on top of my mother, and that's how you got Alex Jones. I am the son of Obama. So we've got Russia doing war exercises. We've got the IRS singling out the Tea Party. And we also have our top story. The state of West Virginia is saying, hey, no false flag here. And this stems from a lot of things that have been going around the Internet the last few months. Um, one coming from a guy named uh, David Vanderbeek who said that he had information that there was going to be a false flag at the Jamboree. Well, we reported on that, then he put that on his post, and then he was getting it from government sources. Now, the state of West Virginia, I guess from all the hoopla and all the people calling into public radio stations and TV stations and asking their people what's going on, we have the article now from InfoWars, West Virginia dismisses false flag allegations. West Virginia Public Broadcasting has issued a statement on the community's Beckley's Best Facebook page assuring the public and conspiracy theorists that the National Guard training exercise taking place at the same time and location as the National Boy Scout Jamboree are not indicative of a false flag event. We go now to the West Virginia Public Broadcasting and they even have a statement from a Major General James Horner, West Virginia's adjunct general, says there's no truth to the rumor that the Guard and Department of Homeland Security plan the training to disguise an attempt by the government to use the Jamboree as a vehicle to expand his power. But it's not just rumors on somebody's Facebook page or on the internet. We also have government documents, things that we take bona fide here at Infowars.com. We have a proclamation that was signed by the governor. Uh, and that was of this year, July 2013. Uh, that's going to start from the 14th of July to the 26th. Um, the Jamboree will bring approximately 40,000 youth and adult scout leaders as well as thousands of visitors to the state of West Virginia. And we move down uh, a little bit more. Whereas, in keeping with the Boy Scout motto, be prepared in preparation for the Jamboree, it is necessary to activate the resources of the West Virginia National Guard and to implement emergency management assistance. Moving on to the uh, second page of this proclamation. Uh, order the implementation of the State Emergency Operations Plan, the activation of the State Emergency Operations Center, and a manner and location to be established by the Director uh, of the Division of Homeland Security and Emergency Management, and the implementation of provisions of Section 6, Article 5, Chapter 15 of the Code of West Virginia. So basically, they're mobilizing their um, emergency management um, apparatus and materials and facilities in order to take into account, you know, the 50,000 plus people that are going to be descending on this remote area of West, West Virginia, and it's near the New River Gorge Bridge. Uh, they bought a site um, near a army base, and we also have an executive order signed by the governor. This, it was done last year in getting preparation for this, and they talk about the Summit Bechtel Family National Scout Reserve, where the, the Boy Scouts are moving their jamboree to. On the third page here, the West Virginia Division of Homeland Security and Emergency Management is hereby designated as principal agency to coordinate all state agency planning and response for activities and events of the Boy Scouts of America at the summit. You want to hear the last page? The West Virginia Division of Homeland Security and Emergency Management shall coordinate with key agencies that will have major roles in support of the National Scout Jamboree and shall provide the governor within 60 days of the order a financial impact statement outlining the needs uh, that such agencies will have in order to provide proper support for a successful event. So nothing, nothing innocuous there. They're activating some emergency sources. They're getting a lot of things together. But what's interesting is that these executive orders and proclamations also coincide with several um, exercises that are going on. And I'm going to go to the exercises. Then I want to show you something else that appeared on, a, on the Beckley Facebook page. Now, and this is reported by a local news agency. Uh, you have the Air Guard Exercise Century Storm, an Army Exercise Ridge Runner, and a Disaster Training and Response Exercise that we haven't given a specific name that is going on at the tunnel at Camp Dawson. And that was um, done by a National Guard member who gave us that uh, named Hoyer. He also expressed the state's main objective is to showcase the state's ability to provide military and national 
security training. According to a news release from the National Guard, training events for Century Storm began on Monday and will run through Friday and will include Air National Guard units from five states and the Army National Guard and Army Reserve units. But all this is taking place in an area where you're going to have about 50,000 Boy Scouts and their dads and other um, Boy Scoutmasters and auxiliary personnel. Descending on this mountain, you also have these major military exercises going on. So it could be used as cover for that, which is why you have people speaking out. Now here's another interesting thing that came out. On the Beckley, uh, Beckley's Best Facebook page, there's a public health notice. 2013 National Boy Scout Jamboree at the Summit Bechtel Reserve, uh, July 15th through the 24th, 2013. Down at the bottom, it says local businesses situations to report. Reports of poss possible foodborne illnesses among your customers or guests. Multiple complaints of any similar illnesses by customers or guests. For example, five guests of rashes or four people complaining of vomiting. And if you look at what uh, David Vanderbeek was saying, he was saying it was going to be a communicable disease that was passed around or some kind of bio attack. That was, that's what he was getting from his source. Now we don't know if any of this is, is happening or if it is, has happened. We most assuredly, we have you know, people in that area that we've been in contact with. Uh, they've been talking about lots of helicopters and lots of uh, air, you know, airplanes and stuff flying around the area, lots of army activity, um, setting up you know, tunneling operations going on, all kinds of stuff going on there. I can tell you this, I've been to West Virginia, I've, I've family, my family roots actually come from West Virginia. Uh, many years ago, I was involved in a production at the Greenbrier Hotel, which is maybe about 40 miles east of this area. And this was a location that in the event of a nuclear attack, the entire your president, United States cabinet members were gonna be evacuated to this hotel, which has a giant bomb shelter in the basement. So West Virginia being involved in these government operations is not anything new. They've been doing this for a long time. Now, is anything gonna happen? Well, here's another interesting thing. This is out of Virginia Tech. Zombie virus to be unleashed at National Boy Scout Jamboree to teach kids about contagious diseases. Okay, there you go. And there it is from the Virginia Tech News. Uh, 50,000 Boy Scouts might just turn into zombies as part of an educational game called Virus Tracker. The data collected by applying Virus Tracker can be used to understand how social contact networks are pathways for transmissions of infectious diseases. Virus Tracker allows participants to use scannable barcodes to infect other players. They'll get points for infecting one another, but they will also strive to become and stay human. From the data collected at the Jamboree, researchers will create an infection tree to show how individual scouts spread zombie viruses within their population. We are very excited about deploying Virus Tracker and other educational applications developed by Network Dynamics and the Simulation Science Laboratory at the forthcoming Boy Scout Jamboree. Not only will the scouts find these applications interesting, but scientists will be able to learn about epidemics in important new ways. And that was from Madif Mareth the Deputy Director of Laboratory and Professor of Computer Science at the College of Engineering. So you have this exercise going on of a zombie virus and we've seen the government in many ways, DHS most notably was doing um, zombie outbreaks and per, uh, practicing of mowing down multiple zombies, shooting people in the head, stuff like that, all in the name of good clean fun. Now. What does the Boy Scouts have to do with the Army and, and, all, and DHS and all those other things? Well, back in 2009, the New York Times published an article called Scouts Trained to Fight Terrorists and More, and we've covered this many times. There you had the Boy Scouts with guns. They were training scouts as young as 14 to go and take down um, veterans. They were going on drug drills, base, uh, helping with border agents. And this was all done through the Homeland Security. Well, this was done in 2009, the youngest being a 14. Fast forward four years later, these kids are now 18, are of now of age to participate in these things on a real time span. So what have you got? You've got the Boy Scouts once again doing exercises with the National Guard. I was actually on hand for some of these exercises back in 2010 in Chicago, and we can roll this footage now. The Boy Scouts, and there's some of their uh, shirts, uh, as they were all their troop shirts, uh, they were all at actually being victims of a terrorist attack. They were being used as hostages in a bio situation. Here it is going 
tour, there, there you have the National Guard kicking in the doors as police training. But they were also using Polish soldiers, which we'll see some of that footage later. They kill the two terrorists. Then they order everyone else to get their hands up, get on the ground. There they are forcing them on the ground. And this white powder that you see in the screen, that was supposedly the biological agent, which I thought that was very interesting that they're having the people put their hands and faces into the biological agent. Then they would lead them over to areas and count them off. They were shouting orders at them, ordering them to cover their faces. Later on, they go through a whole decontamination procedure. But there we go. There's a patch right there. It says BOA. That is the Bureau of Anti-Terrorism in Poland. That is their actual patch. So these guys were on hand for this exercise. And I have on tape, you can go watch Operation Vigilant Guard um, on the Alex Jones channel. Just do a search for that. And we have f officials, emergency management officials in Chicago saying the Polish are only there as observers, they're not participating. Well, there they are participating. They were ordering um, students around at gunpoint, uh, these Boy Scouts, um, using them, guarding them. They're actively participating in these exercises, throwing flashbang grenades and other such things. They were active participants. And for the Chicago emergency management official to lie directly to my face, and I asked him the question twice. I said, are you sure? Because we saw them participating in exercises earlier in, in the day. And he said, oh, no, no, no. They are just merely observers. So that's what you get. You get, there it is, Operation Vigilant Guard. And that was in 2010. It's in several parts, because back then we can only upload uh, 15 minutes of a time up to you, our YouTube channel. But there you can see that's actually Major Lysiak there with one of our Army National Guard units. And they were doing all kinds of things. And at the very end, which is very interesting because we always hear people talk about these crisis actors. Well, our, the last exercise we went was a bio attack at a chemical plant. And it was, uh, funny enough, it was the chemical manufacturer that made the dispersant that they used in the BP oil disaster. They made lots of it. And they had people lined up. They had five, three or four, well, three or four makeup artists there putting on wounds on people and lots of different areas, fake blood using all this stuff. And then they were put out in various locations. And then they did search and rescue and decontamination exercises with those people. But they had wounds so that they could doctor the wound and, and then bring these people out. But this kind of stuff does exist. They, they do these exercises ongoing. This is nothing new. But it just, it's just an interesting dichotomy of the Boy Scouts being absorbed into the state. And it kind of has to go back to, uh, it goes back to President Obama's remarks at the time where he said we need a civilian national security force just as powerful, just as strong as our military forces to get through uh, with the objectives that they've set, which is mainly go around and be a minder, be a set up communist minder brown shirt units, which is where we're going at this point. And so that is definitely something to be on the lookout for. Um, it'll be interesting to see if anything happens or if anything doesn't happen. One thing is for certain, uh, InfoWars has done its due diligence looking at this situation. We've brought out all the facts that we've seen at this point, the government documents, the proclamations by different public officials. So now it's w waiting to see what will happen. If there was anything planned, I think by us shining light on it and others out there, they probably will have backed down on any plans. So let's hope nothing happens because the Boy Scouts is... I think a, a good organization, I was an Eagle Scout actually, so I, I went through the whole thing many years and I learned a lot. I learned a lot about how to take care of myself and how to be an asset instead of a liability. That was one thing we always talked about is by learning different skills, whether it's first aid or how to read a compass or how to build a fire, you want to be an asset to your group, not a liability. And uh, so that's all we're going to say on that. We'll see what happens. Moving on to drone news, Air Force drone crash closes remote Florida highway. And this is out of the AP. Air Force closed Highway 98 west of Panama City and east of Mexico Beach because of possible fires from a crash of a drone. Officials said the drone has a limited 24-hour battery life and will be inactive after the battery was depleted. So we don't have that many drones flying the skies and we've already got them crashing. But by the year 2020, just a mere seven years away, CNS News reported back in March that the FAA predicts 10,000 drones are going to be in the skies by that time. So they are making plans to have 10,000 of these drones flying overhead, and you could rest assured there will be many more drone crashes, hopefully not in populated areas, but we know that's going to be the case because that's where the drones are going to be flying. They're going to be flying in populated areas, and last uh, it was two weeks ago, we brought uh, you the story where we had the 
what looked like an unmanned drone craft or a spy craft in, in, uh, from the Air Force in E6 that was flying around really low next to the buildings in Austin, Texas, doing touch-and-go landings off the Austin airport. And then we go to the website uh, from the local newscast, and they show a picture of the plane, but then they added in the date stamp, which Jakari Jackson pointed out. You could see the two different uh, layers there where, and if y'all can bring that up, that would be really interesting to see. Here it is off the KXAN website. You can see the picture of the plane, and then we're going to zoom into that, and you can actually see, scroll up a little bit. There you go. You can see exactly where they cut and pasted the 7-3-2013 timestamp on it to make it look like they were creating a legitimate piece of news and that somebody took that picture that day. And they didn't do that. That's not the case. So there's another case of the media just lying to you like it's no big deal. As we saw in Katrina, and as we are watching now in New York and New Jersey, the federal government can't and won't help you in a crisis. FEMA ran out of water and MREs in days. Electricity is still off to over one million people. The Red Cross, who is quick to beg for money, is now slow to react. Don't put it off any longer. Get prepared today. While you're on InfoWarsShop.com, check out these other great preparedness items. The Aquapod Kit lets you store up to 65 gallons of water in your bathtub. The Pocket Socket provides you with manual electricity for small electronics like your cell phone. The Life Straw is great for your bug out bag. And check out our complete line of inner food products for great tasting and nutritionally dense foods that have a great shelf life. If you are looking to secure your home in a crisis, you can order Strategic Relocations the film. A great companion to the book Strategic Relocations 3rd Edition and The Secure Home by Joel Skousen. When the time to perform arrives, the time to prepare has already passed. Get prepared now, so if a crisis strikes your home, you and your family will be secure. Go to InfoWarsShop.com 